and I'm here with my guest from Utah State University, Chase Anderson. Uh, welcome to the podcast with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Well, um, I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to interview you because we've been in contact now for, I don't know, probably five or six years um, since we had a store in Ogden, Utah. And, um, and we did a couple of little bits and pieces with you back in those days. But that seems to have like now developed into something a little bit more formal where um, we send you and your, your students um, a lot of our end of life products uh, to your um, to your product development, I think department, and 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 for for them to do what they do with it. So, can you maybe explain a little bit what they do with our end of life products, Chase? Because this was this was actually all your idea. Yeah. Well, so maybe a little bit about our program. So, I I work for the outdoor product design and development program here at Utah State University. It's a really unique uh, four year degree. Uh, a bachelor's degree program where our students learn how to design and develop sports and outdoor products. And a lot of that, um, there's a focus on performance and technical materials. And, and oftentimes it's, it's hard to find performance materials and technical fabrics. And, and uh, so when we got connected and, and talked a little bit, a little bit about some of your end of life products, we thought what an interesting opportunity for our students to take on, maybe materials that otherwise they wouldn't have access to, mm. um, particularly the rain fly material that you use, mm -hmm. um, and uh, make that available for students to use for, for projects. And so uh, we got quite the shipment of material from you on our doorstep, um, a few pallets worth of material. And um, over the course of the last few months, students have been coming through and taking uh, some of these rain flies and uh, reimagining them in, in new new ways into new products. So we've had a variety of uh, types of products made from chalk bags to ponchos to um, you know, uh, tents. We've, we've got students making all sorts of things using that surplus fabric, which has been an incredible uh, resource for them. It's, a, it's such a great story. And I'm like, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is kind of this was kind of your brainchild. Is this your course, or did you join? The, did the university already offer the course, and you came on as a tutor, or did you funnel this particular course into the university? Yeah, good question. This program started before I joined the university, so the program started in the fall of 2015, and then I started working for the program in the spring of 2017. Mm -hmm. So I've been here for a few years at this point, but. Kind of grew with the program. It was only a year old at, at the time that I joined, and so um, I was pretty involved in the early days and, and helping guide the cro the program as as it grew and developed. So we've had about four graduating classes now. It's a four year degree. We've had four cohorts graduate from the program, so we're still really new, um, which is an exciting exciting thing. Yeah. So you, are you saying that because you join in? Uh, 2017, last summer, last summer's cohort would have been the first cohort you saw from the beginning of joining, you joining, and you saw them all the way through to graduation, right? Let's see, tw yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So I saw our first graduating class in 2019, and then, yeah, last year was my first where I saw them in their, their, their first year all the way through, which was, it's kind of wild to see four years go by in front of you. Eyes. Yeah, um, I can imagine. And then it's just like a conveyor belt from here on, right? Because you're going to get to know all of them. Do you work with, with, with them from the beginning or just in the later stages of the course or from year uh, one? I try to be involved from the beginning. It, it's hard to have a connection with every single one of them because we have mm. about 270 students doing the course at any given time. Mm. Not all of them will graduate in the course. Um, but uh, we get about 100 new students every year in the first year. And then from there, they decide whether they this is for them or not, or they transfer into a new program. Um, but I try to be involved in the early days so that they know who I am and I can be a resource for them as they're looking for jobs and internships. Um, that's my primary role is helping connect these students to industry and making sure that they can find opportunities. And I know that's, uh, that's how we initially got connected. We, we had one of our students interning for you all in Ogden uh, at the time that's right. and doing some of this upcycle work, which is I think is where some of this idea really yeah, came from. Yeah, that's right. I, I, 
I remember that. Yeah, I do yeah, remember that. that. And 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 we'll get on. We'll get on to the industry and uh, the the where where the students move on to and what kind of jobs they go and get on to. But let's just take it one step back first. And I just wanted to get to know you a little bit more because you run the course. You're heavily involved. You're four years, five years now into the course. Um, how did you get interested in like do like you know teaching this kind of course what's what's your kind of journey what's your passion it's a good question i i stumbled into it like i think many of us do in the outdoor industry I, there's no there's not really a clear path into this business it seems like until now i think we're trying to create that that clear path for people to enter into the outdoor industry but um i think for me it was stumbling along um I had always been interested in the outdoors, being in Utah, and you know, you've you've been to Utah. It's a beautiful place, uh, beautiful backdrop. Um, I mean, when you grow up with the mountains as you know your environment, it's it's you don't know any different. The outdoors is a part of life, and so. Um, but I discovered the outdoor industry through the outdoor retailer trade show, which was here at the time, yeah. and is now returning. Oh, is uh, it to Salt Lake? That's um, good news. Yes, great news for us in, in 2023. It'll be back. Um, so I was aware of the industry and, and that it was kind of this dominant force. And, and, and But through that, got connected with some, some different smaller outdoor companies, Cotopaxi being one. Yep. Uh, while I was going to college, um, I volunteered for them and kind of had my first real outdoor industry experience working for an outdoor company through them. Um, and then from there, got a job with a large fitness company here in Logan, Utah, um, that at the time owned ultra footwear. So on the trail running side of things. Yep. And, uh, so that was my first exposure to the outdoor industry. And, and then I saw a job, job posting for this position at the university. And my first thought was, okay, to go back and work for my alma mater would be amazing. Um, and then not all, you know, to have the chance to not only work, to work with, one brand, you know, that I was doing currently is, is a great experience, but through this position to be able to work with all of the brands mm. and find ways to, to support and be a resource to the industry mm. um, was, was an amazing opportunity. So I went for it and got the position, and here I am. Amazing. So you got this position based on your experience in the outdoor industry, not based on your teaching experience. No, and in my role, I don't do much teaching. I'm more of a industry liaison for the program. Uh, at, at this point, I do a little bit more teaching, um, but my primary role is marketing the program and then exploring partnership opportunities like, like we have with Tensile, um, finding ways that we can integrate with industry and be a resource for, for our partners, um, helping students get placed in internships and jobs. And uh, So my primary responsibility is, is doing what we're doing right now, yeah. um, but um, through my time in the program, I've, I've added some teaching responsibilities. So I teach two courses now, uh, one which is kind of an industry preparation class where we help students learn how to transition from university to careers in the industry. And the other is our senior exhibit, our capstone class, where we help them prepare their final materials to present to the industry. That's, uh, that's really interesting. I, and I, I'm, look, I'm learning a lot, although we've been in touch for a long time, this is really the first time that you and I are properly touching base and getting to know each other a little bit deeper. And I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated and becoming even more committed in, 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 in strengthening the bond between uh, Utah State University and Tensile. Um, I don't want to be left behind. I mean, I know that you're talking for, to a bunch of other uh, companies, probably Cotopaxi, Cotopelli, all of the cool, all of the cool brands that make uh, funky uh, products out of cool high tech you know quality equipment uh, materials um, and and so so this is this is uh, food for thought for me um, so the students that come through and um, you know they they hundred a hundred a year or something that come through this course do they have a running theme between them you know personality trait or a, I mean w what is it can you, now you're four or five years into seeing these kids, and I know that it might be too difficult because you don't have experience with other course kids to, to benchmark against, but there, there must be a core theme 
that runs through all of these students that, that want to, that are driving to get into, you know, outdoor product industries? There's definitely a passion for outdoor activity um, that, that spans all of them, um, or most of them. That's not a requirement to participate in the program. We, we have a number of students who will join the program who couldn't care less about outdoor activities. They love creating things. They want to make stuff. Mm. And I think if you were to balance those two things, the values of you know someone who's passionate about design and someone who's passionate about the, the outdoors, I think we would prefer to find someone who's really passionate about creating things and solving problems, who mm. has you know a, an, also an interest in the outdoors. Mm. Um, when the program started, it was very heavy people who love getting outside, mm. but people who maybe didn't know so much about design. Mm. Um, and I think more and more as we market the program, I see, think we're finding more students who love creating things and love design, um, who also have an interest in, in outdoor activity. So um, it, it's kind of changing all the time. And I think, I think that actually makes sense because, um, you know, from, from where I am in the industry, you know, which sitting with my tensile designer hat on, I've, I've just, in the last five years, I've just seen a massive ramping up of creativity across the board, like across all of the cool uh, brands that we kind of sit in the same age bracket at, you know, like five to 10 year old or 12 year old companies that all started around that time. There was like the same time we started, there was a massive explosion of small brands that just like filled niches around uh, some of the big, you know, mainstay outdoor brands, you know, North Face, uh, Patagonia, and so on and so forth. And um, you know, um, and so this this explosion of creativity uh, was also helped with, I think, a, a kind of broadening or um, an explosion of new materials and techniques and stuff. It all happened at the same time. And I don't exactly know why it just happened just now, but it seems to be that um, all of a sudden, like technical gear has got very, is, is fragmented and gone in a thousand directions, opening up a thousand new opportunities. It's really interesting. I, I agree with that. I, I think the students who succeed in our program, they, they could be a combination of these couple things, but you can either really double down on the activities and be an expert at the activity, like an Yvonne Chouinard, for example, someone who just, you know, eats and breathes climbing, you know, that's where you find the real problems to solve. Right. And we have students who do that. Um, but then there's others who bring outside perspective, right. Um, design inspiration from other industries and who appreciate design of all kinds and then bring those influences into the outdoor industry. And so I think our program is kind of a mix of those two things, people who are super into the activities that they do, mm -hmm. but we also hope that they can walk away from this program with an appreciation from design in all forms and from all different types of industries mm -hmm. and, and backgrounds. So I, I think, I think you know, to your point, um, I, I, and Tensile was born out of this, right? It's yeah. like a real appreciation for architecture yeah. and bringing that into the outdoor industry. I think that's what we'd like to see more of in our program mm -hmm. is, you know, we have a lot of students who love outdoor activities and are experts at their activities. Mm -hmm. um, we want our students to also look at, you know, other disciplines and bring the, the best of other disciplines into the outdoor space and, and really breed innovation from there. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a fantastic um goal for the course and, and I think it will make make the course and the students a lot richer if they can um, uh, couple the discipline of uh, product design with something else whether it's um, you know graphic design architecture um, yeah uh, they're, they're, you, you're making my head spin a little bit because I, there's a lot I want to say and I, I don't want this um, vlog to get too long but, um, but anyway, all right, let's get back to the students for a little while. And, and one of the jobs that you have, I guess, is, uh, you know, these guys are either, you know, of this persuasion or that persuasion, outdoor people or creative people. But you, your job um, in, in the university is to, is to um, find a balance for each of those students, whichever balance that might be, leaning this way or that way, and sort of preparing them for the next step after they graduate so that they can talk to industry, go into a job interview, feel confident in themselves and the work that they've done 
um, and their abilities and their capabilities and the, 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 their ability to speak and, you know, really um, get their ideas across. So on, on that basis, are you finding it quite uh, rewarding? I mean, are you having a high success rate of getting these students into work and jobs and industries and companies and you know what happens to them afterwards what's the what's the I, I think that's an interesting thing about our program is we really double down on helping our students transition into careers and keeping tabs on them when they do get jobs and and when they're an alum and they've graduated and, and they've moved on from the university we want to keep in touch with them know where they're at and um, because some of our greatest successes have come from alumni, you know, being the first to get a job at a new company that we haven't, you know, built a relationship with. Under Armour was like this for us. Yeah. We had one of our uh, students from the first graduating class got a job there. Um, and as soon as she started working there, their recruiters took note of how good of a job she was doing and reached out to us. Yeah. And they said, we didn't know about this program. Like, how do we get more? Send us some more. Yeah, how do we get more of this student? So, yeah, um, it's really to our advantage to invest in these students and help them find careers because it opens up so many doors for future students down the line. Um, but in terms of job placement, uh, you know, we're over 80% every year. I, we haven't dipped below 80% job placement. Um, and in some in some cases, it's much higher than that. Um, and, and these are students getting jobs at companies like under Armour, Patagonia, L.L. Bean, Eddie Bauer, mm. uh, Cotopaxi, uh, Skull Candy. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I just heard one of our graduates from this most recent class. He's going to be moving to Austria, um, and, and got an op opportunity yeah. you know, in Austria. Amazing. Um, so I mean, these graduates are getting incredible positions, and um, but but we firmly believe that we have to be a part of helping them find opportunities. We're not going to match make we're not going to help the students necessarily we're not going to hand them opportunities but we're going to teach them how do you connect with industry how do you position yourself to be an attractive hire mm. um you know how do we make sure your portfolio and resume looks incredible and you know how to interview mm. uh, we have a whole course dedicated to that within the program is how do we help you transition from you know, university to, to yeah. industry yeah that's a that's a it's an incredible um, it's an incredibly diverse and strong program. Are there other com other programs like that around the country, around the states, or are you now there, getting to be kind of uh, field leader on the subject? I, I think we're definitely leading. Um, there's others who are, are kind of have different disciplines, though, and I think um, there's room for all of us, which I think is the exciting piece. Mm. Um, in our program, we're an undergraduate program, um, and, and so we have a certain responsibility as an undergraduate program to teach certain things and at a certain level. Um, and within our program, we try to provide as much opportunity as possible for students to pursue soft goods, hard goods, or apparel. Um, so we, we kind of take outdoor products and that word product, uh, meaning anything sold in the outdoor industry. Mm -hmm. um, other university programs might be a little more specific yeah. or, or focused. Yeah. So like London College of Fashion, mm -hmm. right, has their sportswear emphasis. Mm -hmm. And so people who want to go into outdoor and sportswear, outerwear, if you just want to do apparel, you could do that or you could do our program. Mm -hmm. um, there's University of Oregon has a master's level program um, in sports product design um, with a much heavier emphasis on sport and on footwear, um, Oregon State has an undergraduate program, which I think is a little more engineering focused from what I understand. Um, so there's other programs out there, and they each have their own unique flavor, um, and which I think is a great thing. It's, it's, it, it, it validates the need for more education like this. When there's more education like this, they, that means there's a demand. Yeah. Um, and you know, a need for this kind of workforce. And, and on that basis, are you seeing more and more applicants as, as the years go by each year? We grow every year. Yeah, I, when this program started, we had 70 students, and now we have 270. So we're definitely growing. There's going to be a limit where, you know, we, we can't take any more. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a portfolio review process after year two. Mm -hmm. 
And so we already have a system in place to, mm -hmm. to, for students to formally apply mm -hmm. after their second year mm -hmm. um, because we, we have capacity issues. We can't take everyone. Mm -hmm. And also the industry, there's a certain number of um, candidates and yeah. that the industry can absorb too. It's, yeah. we, we can't graduate 100 students and expect them to, to yeah. get jobs. Yeah, so yeah. Um, there's, there's a kind of a delicate balance that we have. Um, I, I, I think, you know, look, I think we're, we're reaching, oh, we're 25 minutes already past. So I'm, I'm going to let you go because I know you're a busy man. You've got 270 students to look after. Um, and I was late for, for our time slot. So um, I just wanted to say, uh, Chase, so much thanks for, uh, for talking with me today, teaching me a little bit more about what you do and, and telling everybody who's watching this video about the program, about the opportunities, about the... Um, uh, about the opening up of the minds that you're, you're doing with your students and um, and the connecting between, being the connector between, you know, formal education and the outdoor industry, because these condu conduits, as you say, do, do feed into each other, and it's really important that, uh, that the industry is filled with competent and uh, knowledgeable young generations to come, coming through, coming and bringing a vibrant, ideas and creativity into the outdoor industry so um thank you thank you very much for what you're doing um and i will be in touch offline later on to discuss uh more more collaboration and partnership opportunities but for now That's chase thank you so much for uh, for joining me of course thanks for having me pleasure absolutely anytime